Hi, welcome to Bill's One Car Garage. Uh, this will be just a short video. Today we're just putting a diode in to the alternator circuit. I've had uh, a little bit of run on lately. Um, I think because I've taken the, the center console gauges out because the board had to get sent out for um, testing by the manufacturer. And now I don't have enough load um, to dissipate the energy from uh, the alternator and the car has uh, run on. So we'll put this in and this will correct all of that by only letting current go in one direction. Alright? Alright, welcome back. So uh, what we're going to do is this is my alternator. It's a 150. I've made a connection with it on uh, a 6 gauge painless wire kit. Um, for the extra amperage and this wire actually goes back to the uh, starter lug. Uh, your wiring on your alternator, this is your main feed. Your big lug is your main feed out. Um, these two wires here, one goes to ignition, uh, which is the small brown one. Yeah, it looks brown. Small brown one. And the red one actually um, is your voltage sensing, and that usually goes back to uh, the starter also. Um, the farther you have this red wire away from the alternator, uh, or closer to the battery, I mean, uh, the better it is um, for voltage sensing and to ensure that your alternator is uh, charging your battery properly. Um, you do have the option of cutting it from here and jumping it to your main lug um, as long as your, your gauge is big enough um, which which I have here so I could have done that but I just kept it nice and clean uh, this is a one wire alternator so I also do have the option to um, just put a cap over these two wires and just leave the one wire going but I do like to have this sensing wire on just so I have uh, proper performance out of this um, and that way I still have my generator light on my dash so currently right now we have our voltmeter here and I'll show you So right now, get you guys a little bit here. There we go. So right now, if I touch to this red wire here, like I said, that's always constant, and that should show 12 volts. So there we go. 12.74. And if I touch it to the ignition source wire, I have zero currently. So when you have run on, uh, what happens is uh, the alternator will st still be generating uh, when you turn the ignition off, and it will actually back feed through this brown wire and still feed your ignition and. Uh, with that, uh, the car will continue to run even though the ignition switch itself is off because this connects after ignition switch. And that's why you, um, the car will continue to run with the switch off. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a painless diode kit, uh, 30720, to correct that. And what they give you is a diode, two connectors to crimp at each end with your wire that you cut, some short uh, shrink tube which will go on each end, and then they give you a, a long piece of sh shrink tube that will uh, fit over the diode and these connections, and it'll uh, cover the whole thing and make it all nice and neat and 
uh, waterproof for you. So I said, there's their instructions. Um, the big thing in their instructions is when you look at this diode, it has a ring right here. Make sure that ring is in the direction of the alternator. So you want the current from the ignition to be able to pass through this diode into the alternator, but you don't want the power from the alternator to feed back and feed your ignition system and um, have that run on condition. So I can show you guys real quick too. We'll turn the ignition on. And like I said, there is zero volts on the black wire or the brown wire currently. And if I turn the ignition on, you hear all my fuel system pumping up. So with ignition on, you can see my that brown wire is producing 12 volts. So what we're going to do is we'll cut this brown wire and we'll get started. Let me this in the way. So you want to leave room on the brown wire to make that connection and to be able to slip the uh, shrink tube over it. So I'm just going to cut my zip tie here just to give me a little bit of freedom. So you should be able, you should be doing this with the battery disconnected, just because, like I said, this other connection is live and it is 12 volts. But what I'm going to do piece of tape over this just so it's if I do let go of it and it goes into something at least we have a little bit of protection. Right. Let's see if I can get this more closer for you guys. Crooked. There we go. Okay. So brown wire. So we have lots of room here. This is how much room that we need for the diode and the shrink tube for the connection. So I am going to cut it up here. I said with the ignition off, you should have nothing, no power at this circuit. Inside. The other. So their instructions are take the large piece of shrink tube, run it down your longer length of wire so I've given myself enough room here for that and one small piece because this small piece will go over our initial 
crimp. So I just give the wire a little twist to organize the strands. We'll put our diode in here. So there's a stop. There's a stop in there. Okay. So I bet you I can crimp this. On the diode. That's a good one. I must say, painless makes quality pieces. So let me get my big crumpers. my uh, big set of crimpers they give a lot more force and they have a, a ratchet built into them so they should be able to give us the force that we need to crimp down on these I think I'll choose this one solid crimp. I said these uh, painless kits, they give you good materials. crimps so you can see my crimper it uh, protrudes into the, the connector to push the middle in and that's what gives you your clamping force tight crimp on the wire and the diode. Now you take your first piece of small heat shrink and you bring it over that connection. And we'll cook that on. As soon as I can find my cooker. Where's my cooker? So heat shrink tubing, you can use a, a heat gun on them 
or you can use a, a flame. Um, try not to put the flame directly on it. You want to get the heat from the flame, but you do not want the flame itself touching the heat shrink. That's what I do. So let's get it under, get it rolling, get it beside it in directions. And you can see it start to shrink up. Try to get all sides because you need the heat to evenly shrink this. And just be careful of your large piece of heat shrink. You don't start to shrink that because you won't get it back over your diode. Here we go. That's one side done. We have two nice tight fittings with the crimps. You can see the diode in the center here, that bulge. And that's it. Ready to go. Take my tape off. Two hands. Make you guys fall over. All right, plug it in, and we're done. Just clean up your wire. Just uh, zip tie it back up or whatever you like, whatever your preference is. But uh, you're ready to go. And from now on, your car should not run on from feedback from the alternator through the ignition wire. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.